there and welcome to Wine Inspired Blind Tasting Friday. So as you know by now, this is your blind wine in service. Every week we take a blind wine, go to a different wine shop, ask someone to pick me out a wine, bag it up, don't tell me anything about it. I pour a little bit and try to guess what is in the glass and show you how to do this in the process. So let's do it. Let's get it started. Now, we want to look at a few different things when you are trying to discover what a wine is and you have no idea what, what you've been poured. You want to look at the site. So you want to look visually and try to take some clues away from that. Then you want to smell it. Then you want to taste it. And then you want to put it all together. So let's do this. Now, First things first, is it a really light kind of ruby color? Is it more purple and deep and dense? Or is it more of a garnet faded, almost bricky color? If you can kind of see from there, this puppy is purple. This is a really, really strong purple color. Can't even see through it, not even a little bit. So very, very concentrated. And if you get a little twirl, you can even see the color is so dense, it's sticking to the sides of the glass. So that's kind of interesting as well. We know it's a really thick skinned grape, probably going to be um, coming from a warmer climate just because it has all that staining. Not necessarily, but we can kind of make some inferences. And we know that it's pretty young because it definitely still has that vibrant, deep purple color. We already found out so much. Let's go ahead. Oh, and then you also want to think, you know, maybe this isn't Pinot Noir. Maybe this isn't Grenache. Maybe this isn't like Sangiovese. Those thinner skinned grapes. I think we're dealing with possibly Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, Merlot, maybe, um, you know, even a, a blend of sorts, right? So let's dig deeper. Let's give it a sniff. So this is just jumping out of the glass. It's very alive. It's very powerful. You can even kind of smell it if you hold it at chest level. Definitely here and definitely here. So the, the easier it is to smell a wine from here, that means the more aromatic the grape and the more intense or powerful the aromas. So we know it's intense. Now, what are we smelling? So think about fruits first. Is it really red cherry? Is it strawberry? Or is it more dark brooding black fruit? This one is a great example of that black fruit, blue fruit kind of um, aromas. Ripe blackberry, ripe blueberry, ripe um, black currant, even a little bit of a brambly kind of thing. There's a brambly fruit going on too. And a lot of people are like, what's brambly fruit? And as I say it, I, I just imagine it being like a, a wild, like ripe fruit. If you're wondering, wondering, I thought you might be wondering. Um, okay, back to it. So let's think about the ripeness. So are these fruits going to be more on the underripe tart side or are we smelling something that's really ripe and lush? I think I might have said it already, but this is very ripe and lush. Next, things next. We look at things that aren't fruit and things that are coming from the earth. I'll, I'll get into that. And oak. Those are our next couple things. Alrighty. So things that aren't a fruit here. There's this candied bacon thing. There's something savory. There is a baking spice. So a very kind of sweet baking spice kind of thing going on. There's really not a lot of funk, right? There's not a lot of this earthy, barnyardy stankiness, is what I kind of like to say. Uh, so it's really got these dominating fruit, spice, and there's even some floral. There's even a violet kind of floral element. And then this wine has seen oak barrel because it is very vanilla. It's almost a uh, toasty cereal toast crunch 
you know, toast, cocoa, uh, a lot of evidence of ook. Yeah. And onward and upward. We know all of the smells now. Let's get to the best part. Let's give it a smell or a, a taste. So what's this wine telling us on the palate? For me, the flavors, that's what I wanna focus on first. Flavors are saying, hello, I'm really black fruited. I'm very ripe. I have all that brambly dark fruit. There's also the flavors coming through all about those spices, those sweet spices, that vanilla, that toast, that candy bacon savoriness, and really not a lot of that earthiness or the funkiness. So very straightforward. What we saw, we got on the palette. Cool. And now the structure or what is the wine actually making us feel uh, physically when we taste it. I'll do one more sip just to give it that extra check. Things you want to look for. Is it dry or sweet? So although it's very ripe and it's very oak uh, influenced, it's still a dry wine. So we know it's dry and we also want to think, is it making our mouths water? That's talking about acid. So this one, not a bunch of watering here. It really just doesn't have that high of an acid. So we'll say not much acid. Some red grapes can really make your mouth water, and some, a lot of the times it's an Italian grape variety that can give you that really, uh, mouth watering quality, but this one, no, not so much. And then you want to think about a tannin. So a tannin is that thing that makes your mouth dry up, and it kind of gives you that textural grip. This one, there are some tannins, but they're very rounded. They're very ripe, and they're coming mostly from oak here. And last but not least, alcohol and kind of how the wine finishes on your palate. The alcohol, you can feel it. It's warm. There's a warming sensation, so we know there's a good bit of alcohol in this wine. And it finishes with that alcohol and all that ripe, intense character. All right. So we've broken the wine down. If you've been tuning into a few of the other episodes, um, which I hope you have, Maybe you can kind of start putting together some clues and think, what I described, is that taking you to the old world or the new world? Because we're going to do a final or initial conclusion right now. New world, right? So it does have all these new world qualities, meaning it's from a warmer climate. It's made in a way that's really trying to define a winemaking style more so than exactly a place kind of thing. And it is warm climate, like we said. I think this is a youthful wine, so one to three years of age. With possible grape varieties being our friends uh, Shiraz. I'm going to call it a possible Shiraz. Possible uh, Merlot. Merlot and a possible Cabernet Sauvignon. So those are my three possibilities. And actually, you know what? I want to throw in Zinfandel. I want to throw in Zin just because it was so, it had that nice bit of oak and it had, the alcohol was there and it did have some of those toasty, spicy qualities. So we'll throw that in there as well. And possible countries being Australia, the United States, and that's it. And to round everything out let's do our final conclusion here what's the wine deep breath just spit it out right so i want to say this is shiraz i think it's 2015 2015 and actually i guess i have to say 2016 now because one to three. Yeah, 2016, because it's 2019. Sorry for the confusion. So 2016, I think it's a Shiraz. 
coming from Australia, coming from an area called Barossa, Barossa Valley, and from a good, a good little producer, good producer there. That's that. Let's see the reveal. And this one is, ooh, got one on the nose. See, if you've been watching, you know I never really get it right exactly. Um, but then again, I did miss the vintage. Although this is Lambert Estate. I don't know why I said that in a French accent. It's Lambert Estate. It's Barossa Valley. It's a Shiraz. And it is a 2013. Okay. 15.5 alcohol. Woo, I think it's already hitting me. Anyway, so hopefully you learned a little bit more about blind tasting and how to kind of go about breaking down a wine and what to look for when you're trying to discover its identity. So subscribe if you like what you see, and I hope to see you next time where we keep exploring your kind of wines and how to blind taste them.